awesome. Oh, that's even better. The Cathedral of St. Augustine, the oldest parish in the country. Listen to this, 1594, only 100 years after Columbus. It was supposed to be a seven-year pilgrimage to Japan. Here's the thing we have to see. The Plaza de la Constitucion laid out in 1598. Japan. Pilgrimage. To study Zen archery. You know, they don't even let you touch a bow and arrow for four years. Not until you become a bow and arrow. Hey, Ireland! Up here! I had good sense. I'd cut out in the opposite direction. Friend or foe? Oh, the best friend I had in school. And my worst enemy. You know, I almost made that trip to Japan with him. Well, I'm older and wiser now, and I can handle Harlan Livingston III. <laughs> Septum. It's a sin she won't make it with adhesions. I don't even think she has adhesions. You know you can't fool Dr. Hillman. You're still here, darling. But, darling, I'm so weak. All right, stop it, you two. <sighs> Barbara's a phony, a momentary diversion. Uh, Margaret was kidney stone. Oh! Oh, the last I heard of you, you were in Japan about to become a bow and arrow. Kismet! That's who! What are you now? Tom Cutter, the bartender with palsy? My uncle Frank, Dr. Frank Hillman. Well, my uncle Frank insists Barbara's faking, trying to fool me. I can't seem to make him understand how I feel about people in pain, or even people who pretend to have pain. How have you been? No pain. And where have you been? What is it? Uh, four years. 
pillar to post and back to pillar. Not like the good old days, is it? It's just like the good old days. <laughs> It's all over, Harlan. All over? You mean... I mean there was no operation. W we were too late? There's no operation because there's no need of an operation. W no adhesions? No resection of the pericardium? Resection of my sister's black cat's foot. She's healthier than a weed. But what about her QRS complexes? Those inverted T waves? Two other doctors have examined. In their considered opinion, she is exactly what I told you she was when you first met her in Miami. A malingerer, a gold brick, and a fraud. Now, can we get out of here and get some breakfast? Uh, uh, Todd, is Dr. Frank Hillman, uh, Todd Stiles, Yale, my class. Hello. I could have sworn she was in critical condition, if not in extremis. The only one in critical condition around here is you. Uh, my uncle uh, considers me a severe case of hyper-empathy. Uncle Frank, you know how I hate saying goodbyes. And I was wondering, absolutely not. <clears throat> Wait for me. Goodbye, Mr. Stiles. Doctor, I've just been through an incredible 15 minutes. I've just been through an incredible eight months. Did this really happen, or did I dream it? Don't pinch yourself. It's bad for the tissues. How long has he been on this kick? Mr. Stiles, I have a practice in New York. I also have two harassed colleagues who call me every morning. Frank, they say, why don't you come home and shoulder your part of the burden? Forget about that million dollars. You see, Mr. Stiles, my brother, Harlan's father, made an especially appealing speech to me on his deathbed. He said, stay with Harlem for one year. Do the best you can to guide him and lead him. And I will donate $1 million to your research clinic. Oh, what men will do for the sake of science. First a bow and arrow, now he wants to be a bandage. He keeps finding pretty girls without money, ostensibly in pain who need surgery. He sees to it that they get their surgery. Plus, a convalescence aboard his yacht. The more critical their complaint, the more passionate his infatuation. The way I see it, the first kidney transplant that gets to him hits the jackpot. Mrs. Harlan Livingston III. Well, that was painless. She'd already left in a huff. Chauffeur driven, of course. <laughs> oh, just once more before I die, I'd like to see the Statue of Liberty. He thinks I'm neurotic. And I know a doctor in New York on Park Avenue I'd like to have talk with Harlan an hour a day, five days a week for the next 10 years. I offered to do it by mail. Oh, you. Well, how about some breakfast? No, I can't go with you. I've got to go to work at the Hotel Ponce de Leon. I'm like I'm already late, and it's a good job, and I need it. And I also recognize the bite in your words and the editorial in that tone of voice. You still resent my money. Oh, only because I don't have it. How much are they paying you? Oh, no. oh. American dollars. I'll give you a thousand American dollars for one week's work. I want you to play Pied Piper for me. Now, you're going to love Andrea. And Janelle, she's a doll. 
And Cindy, well, she's the greatest. You'll love her, too. But they're all advanced post-operatives. And goodbye is not only the saddest word in the language, it's another kind of pain. So, you come on the scene, they'll run after you, and I won't have to say goodbye. See? No, Harlan, look, everybody knows what a devastating character I am, loaded with charm. But I'm not gonna be able to lure even a half-intelligent girl off your yacht. Suppose they think you're richer than I am. Fun, huh? And also, a thousand dollars for the week. So long, Harlan. Two thousand. This isn't the first time this has happened, or the 15th. What's so special about these three? They're organized. They're a guild, a union, and they're bargaining to cut me up. Now, Cindy wants a wedding ring, and Andrea wants the informal pleasure of my company forever and ever. Uh, Janella is, is willing to leave, but in return for a 50-year pension plan with fringe benefits. Mind you, they hate each other, but not enough to keep them from working together. Well, tell them to jump overboard. It seems that at the height of their illnesses, I made some rash commitments. And now each has two corroborating witnesses, which mean three terrible things. Breach of promise. You've got to help me, Todd. Well, I have the answer for you, Harlan. Three simple things. You jump overboard. Forgive me for what I'm about to do. Eighty-five cents. So which credit plan are you on? See, we had to stop for gas back on the road, and I went in to call a hotel, and I asked my buddy to pay the bill. But when I came back, I forgot to get my wallet back. That's when I saw Harlan. He was on the boat. He was over-empathizing. I wound up in an ambulance, but it's okay. I'll go right in and find him. How much does he owe you? A big 85 cents. Here's a dollar and a quarter. I know what it's like. I'm forever losing my purse or my key. Or, or... your head. Are you staying here? Two weeks. Who do I ask for so I can pay you back? Baby, you promise. But, Ma. Don't you but, Ma, me, you promise. But, Ma. Some people are authority on blue diamonds, some on blue chips. Me, I'm the final authority on bums. That one is the king of the bums. Baby, my last word. 24 years of my life is invested in you. And now the last $1,500 of your father's pension. For you, it's make or break. For me, it's go for broke. Two weeks, that's all I asked. You promised me two weeks to find you a proper husband. Unless you want to spend the rest of your life living on the Jersey Flats, watching the traffic go by on the Pulaski Skyway. I hate the Pulaski Skyway. Baby, the good Lord blessed you and cursed you, all with one touch of his wand. Beauty he blessed you with. A big heart he blessed you with. But the best endowment any woman can have, the natural capacity for guile, that he forgot. I'll try, Mom, honest. Marriage is different today, baby. Not so much romance, a little more partnership. Two people running a business with assets like furniture, a set of silver, and good accessories. Try to think of it that way, baby. It'll be easier for you. Okay, Mama. Upon the waters brings back a uh, dollar and twenty-five cents plus interest. How about dinner tonight? When do you expect the social director? He's at lunch. A leisurely lunch. I'm the new associate. May I serve? 
I want a schedule of the social activities for the next two weeks. Please. Well, the choice events aren't listed on the sheet. The sheet, for instance, makes no mention of the moon rising over the southern bastion of the Castillo de San Carlos, the oldest standing fortification in the USA. You are looking at the oldest standing fortification in the USA. Me, Dory. You know, I knew this uh, major overseas. He specialized in women. Would you care to hear one of the major's sayings? Well, the major said, when the mother starts looking good to you, that's when the daughter already has you hooked. Now, that mother who just walked out 20 years from now, that's how daughter will look. Yeah. But think of all those good years in between. OK, I warned you. Why'd you call? Now, Harlan Livingston III called and requests the honor of our presence at dinner, the main salon at 7. You know something, buddy? Ever since he's been on the scene, you're different. There's a, there's a new look in your eye, kind of a wild, unpredictable, like a horse who smells smoke. That's not smoke. That's Dory. And the sap's rising. $1,000 all the time. Of course, it may take me anywhere from two to three months. A week, five days. I'm Harlan Livingston. Oh, the, the, the bow and arrow, almost. Pretend to be uh, his bodyguard. $1,000. Why? Because I'm desperate. And the only way I can get out is to put your friend in. Put him in what? Old clothes, the aura of being a millionaire and also the company of three lovely girls I'm trying to get rid of. Uh, tell me more. Well, your friend Todd thinks I'm an eccentric, you know, because I like to help girls who need surgery. I meet a lot of girls that way. <laughs> and on top of that, I do a lot of good. Well, you know, what's so crazy about that? Like, suppose uh, I kept a string of racing ponies, or a string of divorced wives, or a string of factories. That's normal? You sound sane to me. Well, pretend to be the bodyguard. $1,000. I'll do the rest. And I don't ask what the rest is, right? Right. OK. <laughs> this is going to hurt me more than it does him. <laughs> Uh, no, thank you, young man. This is my pleasure. He's not only poor, he's probably married. He'd never look at me like that if he was married. Usually find the likely candidate at dinner time. 
If a man eats alone and studies the financial section, you're on the right track. Take that one over there. The one who's so interestingly losing his hair. Dory. Toast to our host, my old chum Todd. The most self-effacing, the most successful, the most modest man I've ever known. No! Sir. To my boss, the most democratic man I've ever worked for. <laughs> okay, boss. So what should I do with the suits? What suits? The ones you ordered, sir. Look, you have the wrong guy. Oh, no, Mr. Stiles. You gave me a hundred bucks this afternoon. You said, uh, go out and buy some old suits and old shoes. I've been door to door all day, and I bought you a bunch of junk, just like you wanted. Size 40 on the suits. Mm-hmm. Size 11 on the shoes. Mm-hmm. I even picked up some beat-up old shirts. Now, that's very smart, see? Nobody knows who he is. Everybody will think he's a bum. Now, what is it this time, Harlan? He's clean, boss. What's with the frisking? No, I'm sorry to bother you at dinner, Mr. Stiles, but you left this at the bank today, and I knew you'd be lost without it. I, I mean, how can you tip anybody if you don't have your automatic dime dispenser? I swear on my daughter, Martha, I never took one of them. From John D. on, they saved their money. That's very shrewd. They said, what should I do with the suits? Uh, put them in Mr. Stiles' suite, my good man. Can't you see we're about to have dinner? The landing deck's ready, Mr. Stiles. Uh, when do you want to check the arresting gear? What are you talking about? What arresting gear? Uh, for your new jet, sir. The one you ordered to match the converted carrier you bought last month. Uh, I'll stand by outside, sir. Outside, Harlan. I recommend the pompano. It's delicious. Thank <laughs> you. 
Misfortune to ourselves and good fortune to others. I wish you both simultaneously. I'm going to say this once more, and I'm going to try to say it calmly. You are not my bodyguard. Did he fire you? No. I'm getting bugged, Link. Bugged! If any other employee of any other hotel in America started a pie fight in the dining room, he'd have been canned, right? I offered my resignation. But he wouldn't hear of it, right? How'd you know? Oh, he probably said something about admiring the way you go out among the common people and do menial work. Well, as a matter of fact, he did say something like that. But I countered with, do you think it's fair that a man of my immense wealth should deprive some needy youngster the opportunity to replace me? And he said... All right, gentlemen, thank you. And he said what? And he said, you hire so many thousands of men in your various factories and enterprises, Mr. Stiles. What's one measly job here with us at the Ponce de Leon? And we insist that you stay on as associate social director. Matter of fact, he uh, says he wants me to stage a pie fight in the dining room every night. The guests loved it. They thought it was part of the floor show. If you frisk. One more person, I'm gonna take you apart. Nobody attacks his own bodyguard. Stop thinking it'll ruin your complexion. I'd rather watch the Pulaski Skyway for the rest of my life than marry just for money. More than anything else in the world, I want a happy marriage. All marriages are happy. It's living together afterwards that's impossible. Only two things can hold a man and woman together, Dunn and Bradstreet. Mrs. Hunter, Dory, there's something I want to say. Sit down, young man. Now, yesterday, Mrs. Hunter, you were an impregnable fortress, but today, suddenly, the gates have swung wide open. Now, I resent that. I like the way he talks. So forceful. Dory, when I first saw you, a series of belts and levers began to work. I looked forward to... to uh, being able to do St. Augustine together. But as long as you believe I'm a millionaire, that's impossible. We're not Marxists, Mr. Stiles. My daughter and I both believe in the free enterprise system. If a man can be as young and as successful as you, why should we hold that against you? Mrs. Hunter, I am not a millionaire. Unless you believe that, unless we can get back to yesterday's basic honesty, you're putting a big barrier between Dory and me, and I don't want that, Dory. Say something, Dory. I have to be honest with you, Mr. Stiles. Todd. On second thought, Dory, don't say something. It is a barrier. Why was I cursed with an honest daughter? I don't feel the same toward you today as I did yesterday. Dory, the Pulaski Skyway. What could you possibly need I could give you? Well, I'm leaving. Three's a company, four is a crowd. No, no, not till we get this settled. Now, tell her, Link. Uh, what, boss? 
Well, explain to her what happens to people when their paths cross that of Harlan Livingston the third. Everything goes crazy. Sir, if I had $38 million, I wouldn't be ashamed of it. Enjoy, baby. Listen, Dory, I have $2,200 in the bank, the pink slip on a car and a job here at this hotel, besides which I'm a confirmed and dedicated traveler. Ulysses without Penelope, Jason without a fleece. I'm going, but I don't know where. Look at these hands. Look at those calluses and knobs and scars, the marks of 50 jobs in 50 different cities. Thank you. Mr. Stiles or somewhere criminal. What is it? Your ticket. Doc, commodities. In his suite, gentlemen. Check. the wheelchairs all day long, but it doesn't seem to help. Please come with me, Uncle Frank. Somewhere here in St. Augustine, there's a deserving girl in pain. Some girl who needs help. You know, the more I think of it, the more I'm sure Von Osinoff is your man. He doesn't use a couch. I can close my eyes and feel the pain somewhere nearby. He uses an old barber chair he got from Dodge City. Very evocative. Take a pill. That boat there's much nicer than a converted aircraft carrier. And look at that nice man. Not running around with all kinds of wild women like that Playboy Styles. And see how distinguished he looks? And how lonely. Ma, I want to go home, back to New Jersey where we belong. I read a book once about the Aztecs. They used to sacrifice young maidens. Maybe all I have in mind is a little operation. Just some nice, neat, normal surgery. Ma! Is that too much for your old mama to ask?
That's Keyboard Kelly from Kansas City. I flew him in for the afternoon. I hope you don't mind. Doesn't everybody have his own piano player? And everybody needs his own lesson. So if some people start playing games, some other people might keep playing games until the word uncle comes out loud and clear. Until the white flag goes up. And the terms are unconditional surrender and a full apology. Do see if my friend would like some champagne, would you? Oh, it's a lovely vintage, Harlan. Todd had a long chat with the vintner yesterday before having it flown in. Uh, honey, w would you put a little more polish on the big toe? Oh, yes, darling. The vintner, incidentally, is in the south of France. It's very good. Cool. Todd, you know, I'm terribly worried. Well, good. It's beginning to get to you, huh? I've been all over St. Augustine, but all the girls are so healthy. Do you know any needy cases? Why don't you try the classified directory? That's not very funny. What, well, do you think I'm enjoying all this? No, I don't think you are enjoying all this, but that's why you're my friend. I didn't mean to bring you any pain, just a little understanding. Unfortunately, they always seem to go together. Uh, dinner at 7 tonight, I'll raise the white flag. Wait a minute. Surrender won't do it. I want reparation. Look, I really dig a girl here in this hotel for the first time in a long time. That you're ruining. Not only that, you got me hung up with these three parasites. Now, I'm warning you, Harlan. You get me off the hook or I'm liable to buy that aircraft carrier and charge it to you. Ladies of the Parasite Guild, all he has is a nice car, freckles, and not a dime. Sorry. You don't have a bag. I told him downstairs to send up the house doctor, and I thought, my daughter, she's worse than ever. These attacks are getting worse and worse. Please hold her hand while I call downstairs again. Operator, you must send the doctor up here at once. My daughter's had another spell. I think it's her brain. <laughs> inhumanity to man, you've reached a new low. There's nothing wrong with Doree that she and I can't work out together by ourselves. I'm not going to let you turn her into one of your parasites. I have reason to believe it's a severe case of narcolepsy. Horse feathers. All right, let's assume it's a case of horse feathers. Better a thousand girls not in pain get some help from a concerned human being than one girl really in pain be denied. Well? Well, it could be almost anything. It could be narcolepsy. May the saints preserve us. What is narcolepsy? Harlan, will you please shut up? You don't know what it's like living with this. Never knowing. Knowing what, Mrs. Hunter? Well, I don't know anything about medicine. Except what I see on TV. Oh. But I'm a mother. And I say it's in the head. I think there's some pressure on a small part of my poor child's brain. 
Well, she's gonna have the best money can buy. I think I need a drink. You see, this part of the brain that makes us selfish, uh, this part that makes us be cruel to one another, well, my poor little baby doesn't have that. All she can do is be sweet and loving and generous and kind and forgiving. Well, a person like that doesn't stand a chance. I read somewhere that doctors are making a study of this, and they found the same disease to be quite common to most of the saints. This terrible pressure. On second thought, I think I'll have a double. Mama. You should be ashamed of yourself. She says the strangest things during these spells. You put something in my coffee. You see? We've been poor for so long. She's liable to try almost anything. But she's really a very nice person. Good, all the way through. Can't say anything bad about anybody. She tried to fool you, Mr. Livingston, so you'd meet me and maybe love me. But that's not love. finest surgeon in the country for this kind of work. So relax, will you? Thank you, gentlemen. He's as ready now as he'll ever be. Now then, before they come in to take you away, there are a few things I'd like to get off my chest. Particularly because you have the worst case of tonsillitis I've ever seen and consequently have no voice to interrupt me. If you are going to resume your adolescent chasing of girls under the pretense that you are Richard the Lionhearted carrying on a crusade against the Saracen pain, I'm going to take the next plane to New York. I'll forget about my new wing on the clinic. What? Well, but I... I don't understand. You mean that that million dollars has been in my account all this time? This past eight months? Why? Because Dad and I felt you were working too hard and we're heading for a breakdown and it was the only way we thought we could get you to take a vacation <laughs> all this time Harlan, all this time i thought i was taking care of you and all this time I was the patient. I'll have to ask her to step outside, doctor. We're about ready. No, 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 no. You, you can't go in there. It's my fault he fell in the river and he needs me. Don't worry. If I could go through this instead of you, I'd gladly. I feel so bad I may never speak to Mom again. What if something happens to you? Is he in much pain? Oh, absolute agony, my dear. Oh, no. <clears throat> oh, I'll stay right by your side. I'll nurse you back to health. Oh. She called me a monster. Well, uh, I'm not throwing any stones myself today. You took your best shot for money. So did I. 
So why don't we monsters just go and get ourselves a little drink? Harlan, I'm sorry. Not enough. Tell him the rest. I don't know why, but Lynx got me convinced you're not wacky. The rest of us are. Did you see the way she looked at me? Dirt. I'm dirt. Just for trying. You know, they make a rather nice looking couple, don't they? Well, how about that? I don't want to hear about the Major. Pumpkin grapes? Jamaican coconut. Vanilla. But that's my favorite, too. But a special person like you, Mr. Livingston. Vanilla? Presentation, Herbert B. Leonard, executive producer.